being your best with Trey Johnson. Changing the world, one thought at a time. We want to welcome you to Being Your Best with Trey Johnson. Thank you so much for tuning in today. You know, I'm excited about what God's speaking to the body of Christ, to people around the world. You know, there's a lot of things that are trying to distract us, to pull us off of becoming who God's called and created us to be. And with the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, we have the ability to stay focused on God, to stay focused on what we're called and created to do. You know, there are people that are counting on you and I to rise up to be the warriors that we're called and created to be. So I want to encourage you to tell some Somebody about the show. Call them right now. Text them. Tell them they need to tune in because God's going to start revealing his heart about what is going on in the world today and how you and I can live in victory right in the middle of chaos. Are you ready to grow tonight? Are we ready to hear from the heart of God? I kept hearing these words, immerse and emerge. Say it, immerse, immerse. and emerge. So I just began to study, all right, what is, what is immerse and what is emerge? And, and he was saying, I, I want you to immerse yourself in what I'm fixing to say because the life of God in you is going to begin to emerge. The favor is going to emerge. Answers are going to emerge. Winning is going to emerge. Wealth is going to emerge. What God has placed on the inside of us will emerge as we immerse ourselves in what God is saying. And then that same week is when Dr. Savell came out with the word, what God is talking to him about, that it is our time to progress and advance and to walk in promotion and to have our highest expectations fulfilled and to stay focused on the promises of God and to stay in faith and to not allow distractions to, to distract us from what is going on. Um, well, don't allow things in the world to distract us. So immerse, listen, listen to this, a definition of immerse means to submerge, plunge, dip, involve oneself deeply in a particular activity, absorb, engross, occupy, and soak. Say it, immerse, immerse. and emerge. Immerse. immerse, to occupy ourselves with what God is saying, to submerge ourselves in what God is saying, to engross ourselves in what God is saying. Now, the opposite, the anonyms for immerse means bored. Now, the, this describes what the enemy wants you and I to do. Bored, disinterested, idle, inactive, unoccupied, ignorant, neglectful, and negligent. Remember in Luke 22, verse 31 and 32, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. And, and we've learned in the Greek that what that means, that your faith would not fail, is that your faith would not be reduced to inactivity. So when God was saying, I want you to immerse yourself in the Word, the enemy wants the opposite for us to be inactive. Say, not me. not me. Now the definition of emerge, listen to this, to move out or away from something and come into view. <laughs> to move out or away from something and come into view. So as we immerse ourselves in what God is saying, we're going to move from where we were and we're going to move in to who we're called and created to be, to move out from one place, to move in to progression, to move in to advancement, to move in to promotion, to emerge, to move out or away from something, to come into view. It means to become apparent. It means important, prominent, to become known, recover from or survive a difficult or demanding situation, to break out from an egg or a cocoon. It means to appear, to arrive, come up or crop up. Immerse ourselves in what God is saying and we will emerge. One of, the, one of the synonyms is arrive. We, we, will, we will begin to arrive. We will appear. We will be the light shining in darkness. We will be the head and not the tail. We will be above only and not beneath. As we immerse ourselves in what God is saying, 
The life of God is emerging in this body. The healing of God is emerging in this body. We begin to see progression emerge. See, it has to emerge from the inside before we experience it on the outside. But as we immerse, we will emerge. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 in the message translation, it says, cultivate these things. Now, when you look at the word cultivate, it means to develop. It not only means to prepare the ground, but it means to develop the skills that are in you. To cultivate. Cultivate these things. Immerse yourself in them. And the people will all see you mature right before their eyes. Keep a firm grasp on both your character and your teaching. Don't be diverted. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. Salvation meaning soundness and wholeness and completeness and provision. You and those who hear you will experience, will experience, not might experience, I will experience progression. I will experience advancement. I will experience promotion. I will experience my highest expectation fulfilled. I will. Say it. I will. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15, 14 and 15. He says, Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying of with the laying on of the hands of the eldership, meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Now listen to the definition of progress. So, so say it with me. Progress, progress. Advancement, advancement, promotion. promotion. Progress, progress, advancement, advancement promotion. promotion. The definition of prog progression, the act of progression the act of progressing forward or onward movement, advancement, breakthrough, betterment, boost, development, furtherance, growth, headway, improvement, promotion. The act of moving forward. Remember what James tells us that those who hear the word of God and do the word of God were blessed in our doings. We're blessed in our life, blessed meaning to empower, to prosper, empower, to move forward. And God is saying, this is the new season that you're in. You are progressing forward and onward movement. What does that look like spiritually for you? What does that look like financially? What does that look like relationally? What does that look like in your calling and assignment, advancement, breakthrough, betterment, boost, development, furtherance, growth, headway, improvement, promotion? Say it, promotion. The definition of advancement. Now, if you're taking notes, you'll have to go back and <laughs> listen to this. But stay with me here. Advancement, the act or process of moving forward. Promotion in rank or standing. Growth, improvement. Notice a lot of these words are the same. Growth, improvement, upgrading. Progress, betterment, elevation, gain, headway, preference, rise, march, progression. Say it, progression, progression. Advancement. advancement, promotion. Promotion, advancement and rake or position. Some of the words for promotion. Betterment, boost, breakthrough, build up, elevation, encouragement, exaltation, furtherance, honor, go ahead, improvement. Go ahead. God is saying, I want my family to go ahead. I want you to go ahead and be who you're called and created to be. I want you to go ahead and progress into the land you're called to. I want you to go ahead and advance and be everything you're called and created to be. I want you to go ahead and position yourself under the mind hand of God. So in due time, He exalts us. Go ahead and be the healed of the Lord. Go ahead and be the blessed of God. Go ahead and operate in all the gifts of the Spirit. Go ahead and walk in all your dominion and authority. Go ahead. Go ahead and be who we're created to be. Go ahead and push back every, every power of darkness. Go ahead. We got to get some go ahead in us and on us and about us. Look at your neighbor and say, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Woo! You see my hair standing up right there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and has not entered into the heart of man, all 
that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who love Him. Is that us? Who hold Him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying Him and gratefully recognizing the benefits He has bestowed. You know, it's a benefit to be cleansed by the blood. It's a benefit to be in the family of God. It is a benefit to know God as healer and deliverer and provider and director. It, it is, there's a lot of benefits. And he goes on to say, yet to us, say to me, God has unveiled and revealed them by and through His Spirit, for the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. God has given us the Spirit of God, and the Holy Spirit is showing us how to stay focused. He is showing us how not to get distracted. He is showing us how to progress, how to advance, how to walk in prayer. He has shown us how to expect on a different level so He can do new things in our life. Amen. Isaiah 48, 17 says He's the one that teaches us to profit. Yes. Right. Say it, progression, progression. advancement, advancement. Promotion. promotion, my highest expectations fulfilled. My highest expectations fulfilled. That's the season we're in. That's the season that we're in. And there's a grace for every season. There's an empowerment for us to make progress. There's an empowerment for us to get better. What does that look like for you? There's a, an empowerment for us to go ahead. There's an empowerment. And the Holy Spirit is revealing this to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1. It says, To everything there is a season and a time for every matter or purpose under he heaven. To everything there's a season. There's a season to make progress, and it's now. There's a season to walk in advancement, and it's now. There's a season to walk in promotion. And when is it? It is now. There's a season of our highest expectations being fulfilled, and it is, it is now. It says, to everything there's a season, a time for every matter or purpose under heaven. Season, time, purpose. Acts 17, verse 26, it says, David served his generation and fulfilled his purpose fully. Esther, Esther chapter 4, it says that she was born for such a time as this. Say it, time. time. Seasons. seasons. Time, seasons. For every purpose in heaven, we, this, is, this is where we're at. God is, is echoing through the offices of ministry. Immerse yourself in what I am saying, and it will emerge. It is time for my body to make progress. It is time for my body to advance. It is time for our highest expectations to be fulfilled. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, one of the meanings of the word light comes from a Hebrew word, O-R-E, and it means order. So, so let, let, let's listen to what God is saying. He's identifying the times that we live in. He's identifying the seasons that we live in. And at this time, the Spirit of God was hovering over the chaos, hovering over the void, hovering over the disorder. And he said, order be, light be, and order was. So whatever area has been chaotic, whatever area has been void, whatever area there has been a darkness over, we're in a new season and God is saying, order be. This is a season you're in and God sent his word to bring order to the chaos. Yes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. So times, seasons, 
God's Word brings order in the season we're in if we have the right behavior. God's Word saying now is the time for progression. Now is the time for advancement. Now is the time for promotion. Now is the highest expectations being fulfilled. He sent that Word in this season to bring order. But it takes the right behavior in the season... To experience it. Yes, sir. The right behavior in the season. See, we don't just believe things into our life. We behave things into our life. Because when I believe something, I'm going to behave a certain way. We don't just believe things into our life. We behave things into our life. If I believe that God is for me, I'm going to behave different. If I believe that He's my healer, I'm going to behave differently. If I believe He's my provider, I'm going to behave differently. So if I believe I'm progressing, if I believe I'm advancing, if I believe God is promoting me, I'm going to behave like I'm progressing, advancing, and promoting. And I'm going to expect, I'm going to expect new thoughts, I'm going to expect new dreams, I'm going to expect new visions. I'm going to expect new strength. I'm going to expect new provision. I am going to expect. But it takes the right behavior in the season. See, I didn't see any of you get out of your car and walk up here in your swimsuit. That would be the wrong behavior for this season. <laughs> We're not going to get together in July and be in fur coats. Wrong behavior for the season. Now you can keep reading in Ecclesiastes and he talks about there's a time for this and a time for that and a time for this and a time for that and a time for this. What was he saying? There's a right behavior for every season. See, all a season does is present itself, but it doesn't make us do what we're supposed to do. But in order for us to make the most out of this season, it's going to take the right behavior. I don't want to get caught cleaning my gun when it's wartime. Hold on there, enemy. Can you, can you hang on just a second? All right, come on. Wrong behavior in the season. How about, how, we, we've all seen American Idol, and this just makes me laugh when I think about the right behavior in the season, because here these people are, I mean, they, they, they stay out there for days, and they're in this line, and they have this season that's presented to them, this opportunity that's presented to them, and they get up there, and they're saying, this is my time, this is my season, and they open their mouth, and light up my life. And it's horrific, just like your faces are expressing to me. See, th thank you, Pastor. Thank you. He's such an encourager. He is saying, that's good that you never do that again, please. But see, they didn't have the right behavior in the preparation season. So when the opportunity presented itself, they didn't maximize the opportunity. God presents seasons to us and he's saying, listen, listen to what I'm saying. It's the season to progress, but it's going to take the right behavior. It's the season to advance, but it's going to take the right behavior. It's the season for promotion, but it's going to take the right behavior. The season is given by God to bring order to our life, but it's not just the season in itself. It's what we do in the season. So when he's saying, okay, it's time for you to elevate. It's time for you to get better. It's time for promotion. It's time for you to go ahead. Well, if I believe that, then there's going to be a behavior That's right. that backs up my belief. Farmers are, are excellent at identifying the seasons. I remember as a little boy, I would, I would ride on the tractor I mean, we still hoed cotton whenever I was a little boy, you know, and all my aunts and uncles, they'd get mad at me because I was, I mean, five, six years old, and I'd get out there with my little hoe, you know, but I'd get behind the seat of my tractor of my paw and the vibration, you know, it would put me to sleep, and they'd all get mad. But I, I remember as a little boy having the right behavior in the season. In wintertime, he wasn't out there watering. 
In the wintertime, he wasn't out there spraying. He wasn't out there planting. You know what he was doing in wintertime? I remember taking the, taking the blades off of the, the disc and the plows and everything, and they would sharpen them in the wintertime because that was the right behavior. But when spring rolled around, they had different behavior because they did what they needed to do in the preparation season. So when the next season presented itself, they could have the right behavior and make the most out of the season. Our season... God is saying the behavior is to stay in faith. The behavior is to stay focused. The behavior is to not get distracted. He's saying this season is a time to progress, a time to advance, a time for promotion, a time for our highest expectation fulfilled. Season, but we must have the right behavior in the season to make the most of the opportunity. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 in the Amplified making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil. Making the very most of the time, buying up each opportunity because the days are evil, making the very most of the time. So God is, is saying, this is the season that you're in, progression, advancement, promotion, but it's what I do with my time that sets me up to maximize the opportunities that are coming because they're coming. God is no respecter of person. They're coming. The question is, will we be ready to maximize the opportunity when it's presented to us? Or will we be like the American Idol people that don't use the preparation time to get ready so an opportunity presents they can maximize the opportunity. What we do with our time determines who we become, where we go, and what we do. Exactly. Time is the currency of life. What are you doing with your time? Developing your gift, your calling. We're shouting and declaring God's pr pr promoting me and advancing me, and I'm moving forward, and things are getting better. Well, what are you doing uh, with what you have? See, God is not asking us to do something with something we don't have. He's asking us to do something with what we do have. See, significance is I'm going to use whatever I have wherever I am every single day. And I use my gift wherever I am every single day. I'm going to look up and I'm going to be ready. I'm going to look up and I'm going to make the most of the opportunity. I'm going to look up and I'm going to be walking in my purpose. Not because I'm waiting for it to come, but we live day in and day out, putting first things first. Day in and day out, we're thinking like advancement. We're thinking like progression. We're thinking that we're being promoted. We're thinking about what we're expecting, God. We're thinking we're having the right behavior in the season. You know, I... I I enjoy just tracking David because he wasn't a perfect man, but he was a man after the heart of God, and he was not some panty waist Christian. I mean, he was a warrior. I mean, he was... Ugh. You know, as Heather and I travel all over the country, we are seeing so many people come into the kingdom of God. We're seeing lots healed, lots saved, delivered. And our partners are a part of that. You know, when David, he went to battle and, and he came back, he told the whole crew, the ones who stayed there, the ones who fought, that they all get the equal portion. Listen, it isn't just us doing the work. We couldn't go without you. And so we want to invite you to pray, to seek God. And if it's on your heart, partner with us. Pray for us. Be a part of what God's doing around the world. Don't forget to go to all of our social media outlets. Go to our website, TreyJohnstonMinistries.com. We have daily encouraging words. We have the YouTube channel. We have the podcast. We have the daily devotionals. We have a lot of different things to help add value to your life. Thank you so much for praying, believing in what God's doing in us, and we'll talk to you soon. But you can look at the seasons that was in his life. And you can look at his behavior. And then you can look maybe at Solomon's life and you see the different seasons in his life and, and the behavior because Solomon got off at the end of his life. But David didn't, even though he made mistakes, he still fulfilled all the will of God. You, you, you think in the beginning, the season he was tending his dad's sheep. That was a season. He had the behavior of being faithful. Then the prophet Samuel came and anointed him as king, but he wasn't quite ready to be the king. So the next season, he not only had one job, he had two jobs. And he was taking care of his father's sheep, and he was serving King Saul in the palace. 
See, God speaks to us from our future. God speaks to us from our potential. He speaks to us from the way that he sees us. He had already anointed David as king, but David wasn't quite ready yet. So there was preparation, right behavior in the season that he was in. And so he was faithful to his dad. He was faithful to King Saul. I know you got a lot out of the teaching today, and I don't want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and listen to it again. Go to the podcast. You know, call the number that's on your screen and get a copy of this teaching because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You know, Heather and I want to invite you to partner with us as we travel around the world, as we are doing our best to expand the kingdom of God in all different types of venues. And if we can add value to your organization and to your church, to whatever God's putting on your heart, we want to connect. We live in a day and time where we've got to be where we're supposed to be to call people out of darkness into light, to expand the kingdom, and it takes partnership with you and I coming together. So we want you to pray about that. There's ways to give uh, that you've seen throughout the show. You can go to our website. There's ways to give there. But you know, if you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I don't want to get through with this show without giving you the opportunity to know where you're going to spend eternity. That is the most important thing. You know, 1 John chapter 5 says when a person receives Jesus, they receive eternal life and they know where they're going to spend eternity. You think about that. They don't guess. They don't wonder. They don't wish. You say, how can you explain that? There's a knowing there. It's just kind of like, you know, you have a brain in your head. You can't see it, but you know that it's there. You have a heart beating in your chest. You can't see it but you know that it's there. Well, when you accept Jesus, there's a knowing. I'm not talking about fire insurance. I'm not talking about, okay, man, I, you know, a get, get through hell, go past go. You know, I'm talking about a personal relationship with Almighty God, settling where you're going to spend eternity, coming from darkness into light, coming out of the family of Satan into the family of God, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So if you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, if you want to settle where you're going to spend eternity, I want you to pray this very simple prayer together with me right where you're at, wherever you're listening, however you're listening. And as you believe these words in your heart and as you declare these words with your mouth, like your eternal destiny depends upon it because it does, right where you're sitting, standing, driving, wherever you're at, the life of God enters you and you are born into the family of God. Would you pray this with me? Would you just say, Father God, today is that day that I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead to give me life. And right now, I accept that life and I ask you, Jesus, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and according to God's Word, I'm forgiven, I'm saved, I can be certain that I'll spend eternity with Almighty God. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time in your life, we want you to reach out to us, call us, write us, let us know. We want to get material to you. We want to help you grow in your relationship with God. Hey, this is Trey Johnson. I'm so grateful that you've joined us today. I believe that you've got something out of it that you can apply because remember, it's the doers of the word that get results. Until next time, God bless you guys.